Is spiritual experience or contact with spirits a reliable source of spiritual knowledge? It's tempting to believe that having a spiritual experience or speaking with spirits would help us to know the truth. But is that really the case? Swedenborg is cautious on that point, and in this chapter we come to understand why. Believing that there is a spiritual world which we cannot ordinarily see while in the physical body, it's easy to recognise that we only have half the facts, and so there may be many things that we do not know. It would be nice to think that when we awaken after death, we can see the truth and have all our previous misconceptions corrected. And we might be tempted to think that if only we could talk to spirits, we could settle some of those questions now, before we die. But Swedenborg points out that the picture is a bit more complicated than that. Yes, not having conscious awareness of the spiritual world leads to certain false beliefs based upon living in a world of appearances. But there's another dynamic at play here, whether or not we want to see the truth. And if anything, that is more important. Back in chapter 53, we came across the concept of vastation, the process by which those who are being prepared for heaven have their evils and falsities set aside. And he mentions it here again in paragraph 551, but this time it's the other side of the coin. It's the removal of goods and truths from those whose eternal home is hell. Remember that hell is just the state of being in which self-interest rules. Just as there cannot be any evil and falsity in heaven, there can be no goodness and truth in hell either. Throughout his writing, Swedenborg emphasises how it is the heart that rules the head. Whether we see the truth or not is dependent primarily upon whether we want to see the truth. And this is even more true of people in the spiritual world than it is in the physical. So those ruled by good see truths clearly. But those ruled by evils, and that is self-love and love of worldly pleasures, believe appearances, fallacies and delusions to be true because they want to believe them. And this has important implications for spiritual experience and contact with spirits. Imagine you're walking down the street and a stranger coming in the opposite direction stops you and says, can I borrow your car? I'll have it back to you in half an hour. Or perhaps you've opened your email inbox and found a friendly message from a lawyer in Nairobi identifying you as the sole heir to a small fortune, if only you'll send them your bank account details. Random contacts from strangers in the spiritual world are no different from random contacts in the physical world. There's nothing to say that they either know the truth or have a selfless desire to share it with you. In either case, you should proceed with caution. And this is the concept of the falsity of evil. That is, the fallacies and delusions that follow as a natural consequence of self-interest and worldly desires. Swedenborg's message is very simple. If you want to know the truth, and you can, learn first of all to love and practice what is good and everything else will follow. As always, you're welcome to read along with us or read ahead if you prefer. You may have some questions you'd like to put in the comments. Enjoy the journey. <laughs>